Good afternoon fellow aircraft builders and uh, aviation enthusiasts. I wanted to shoot a quick video showing you how you form your actual ribs. I've done a couple of videos on uh, forming blocks and cutting templates and things like that. But I haven't really shown you uh, in process of forming a wing rib. So in an earlier video we took a look at a forming blank which is the flat part before it actually gets finished. So we have, you know, the rough shape of the wing. Actually, let's uh, back up a little bit. So here we have the, the, the parts blank, and I showed you in a previous video what this looks like. This is the rear rib for my main wing structure. So we have flanges that here and up the sides and the front that attaches to the wing spar. The, this attaches to the wing spar here. And then the bottom and uh, top flanges, they attach to the wing um, skin. And the back flange nests inside the rear wing channel. And that all gets riveted together in a kind of a skeleton shape. So in order to form these parts, you have to create a forming block, which I showed in a previous video. The forming block has crimp locations and um, a specific bevel angle and then one eighth inch radius that the metal can form around and then crimping locations or fluting locations, however you want to call it, crimps or flutes, that go in here and that those flutes draw the extra metal that you have as you're trying to go around a curved surface. If you try to just simply bend all the way around the surface you end up with a wavy structure and if you've ever worked with home ductwork and uh, or other sheet metal you already know that. So you have crimping locations in the wing ribs to draw in to draw in that extra curve material as the as you're curving around a radius like this is here. So this is the top surface of the wing. You can see there's a curvature to it. And there's crimp locations here as that material needs it needs some place to go as you bend it around the radius. So I've got I've done four of these up to this point. Uh, I need to do two more of this side. These are the uh, left wing ribs, or um, um, they're one side. I actually don't know if they're right or left <laughs> at this point. I have to look at the construction manual. But this uh, they're six of one, either the right or the left, and then I have to flip the form block and, and bend it the other way for the other six. So, because the wing rib itself is such a large structure, um, you need more than just your bench vise here. I've got several clamps uh, positioned here uh, along the edge that I'm bending and down here as well. And what this gives me is a, a very tight holding surface between the two. Now I already have my locating holes for the tooling holes and there are bolts through there, but they don't do much clamping in the spot that they're at. The wood is very soft and so I could clamp right here with some wing nuts and some uh, washers but that's still going to leave a lot of uh, unclamped surface area out towards the edges which is where I actually need it to be tight. So if you get yourself a series of these clamps, these Home Depot clamps are fairly cheap or some C clamps, whatever kind you've got, you need to make sure that they're actually um, they're screw down clamps. You don't want to use spring loaded and even the uh, tension like trigger type like a quick grip um, that are like I've got a, a set of Irwins here with the these are the trigger type quick grips. These are uh, these just don't have the holding power that you need. Uh, you uh, they they do um, a pretty decent job for holding other things, but uh, it's it's much better to actually have one that uses a threaded rod to clamp these surfaces down. And so. I've got these clamps strategically placed where I know that the material is going to want to have a tendency to bend and flex and move about. And so what I'll do now is show you how you actually hammer this, this part into position. And we'll change camera views a few separate times. So when you're hammering on aluminum, uh, you don't want to use anything other than, say, rubber or a plastic coated mallet. You can use steel, but uh, there's a tendency for some of the steel to actually get embedded into the aluminum. You don't want to introduce a dissimilar metal to your aluminum. So the technique that works well for me is just a solid cheap rubber mallet. Uh, I do have a dead blow as well. Both of these are from I believe Harbor Freight. Uh, no, I take that back. This is an MIT tool. It's very cheap. This is a Harbor Freight dead blow mallet. I'll switch back and forth using these depending on where I'm at in the pro uh, procedure. 
but generally speaking I do 99% of my forming with this cheap rubber mallet. So what you'll do is to get the metal to start forming around your radius I'm going to hammer towards myself with this piece here. You're going to start at one end and just very slightly start to try to hammer that flange towards you. And when it starts to move and starts to bend you know you've got it started. What that's doing is forcing the edge of the flange that needs to bend around the radius up against that radius and it's starting to shape it initially. You want to make sure that you get a, just a very gentle angle on that uh, forming area. And you can see back here right here it's just starting to just starting to bend a little bit and that's good. You don't want to go much further than that. You want to continue down along the line gradually uh, as you bend the material because if you bend it, if you bend this all the way down to the edge of the radius flat, it will stretch the metal so much that you'll end up actually needing deeper crimps and you'll, you'll, it'll get misshapen. So you want to start out just a little ways and continue down the line until you get just a very shallow bend. Once that radius starts, work your way down the end a little bit and you can kind of keep it flat as you go. get too squiggly and you can move these clamps out of your way as you get down to them. Move them back out of your way to finish up. And because it sticks so far out from my bench vise, I actually hold a little counter pressure as I'm moving towards the end of the, uh, the rib. So, Once I've gotten the angle to somewhat match, I've got roughly the same amount of angle on the flange all the way down, I'll stop. At this point I'm going to put the flutes or crimps in my material because if I don't do it now, it's going to be really hard to get the pliers in underneath there if it's laying against the material. So now that I've got my angle started, I know where these are going to bend at. I can go ahead and take my crimping pliers and put my crimps in exactly where my relief cuts are in the form blocks. And you want to be fairly close on this. They can be off somewhat, but you want to be fairly, fairly accurate with where you're putting these crimps because otherwise they won't draw down in the hole properly and you'll get a buckle. So on this particular, this is the bottom edge of the wing or the bottom side of the wing rib. There's only three towards the back because that's where the uh, trailing edge of the wing starts to curve upward slightly in the profile. Once I have those crimps in place, I basically start the process all over again. We go back to the portion, front portion of the wing rib and start forming. And we're just gently hammering that flange into position. Trying to keep it as straight as we can, as much as we can. Okay, so now that I've got that profile done, I'm, I'm pretty well straight all the way down. Uh, I can actually just go right back the other direction and keep forming that flange. Alright, so now I'm back down to the other end. We'll repeat the process again. You want to try to make sure that your your hammer motions are somewhat biased towards you or um, to the opposite side where the radius is because you want to keep that material tight down against that radius as you're drawing it towards you. So when you're hammering, try to keep a slight angle this way. You don't want to hit with the edge of the mallet on the material though because you can dent it, but you want to with the face of the mallet just keep a slight angle towards you towards the direction that you're forming that flange. So that you keep it up against the uh, radius. Now I've got this almost all the way down on the edge of the forming block, 
but I need to draw these flutes down into these crimping locations. So I need to draw these down a little tighter. And what that'll do is it'll pull this excess metal on either side of the flute towards the crimp and down into the flute and the relief cut that I've made on the forming block. And again, I got to give credit to Zen Air, uh, Mark and Dave. They, uh, they display how to do this on their uh, Hints for Home Builder series, or the Hints for Home Builder series that they participated in for Plans Builders. That is the one video I purchased on how to do, uh, to help me build my aircraft. Um, very informative, lots of tips. There's a lot more stuff you need to know and a lot more stuff you need to pick up along the way, but a lot of it will depend on your specific amount of tools and what you have access to. So there's no way to cover all of that in a single video. They did a great job giving you the basics that you need to build an aircraft from plans. So I give them credit there. They uh, gave us gave me a good idea on how to do a lot of this stuff and then I'm fine tuning my own technique as I go. But anyway, in order to draw these flutes down into the forming block relief cuts, you need some type of hard material that you can essentially bash down into that hole. And the way that I've done that is almost identical to uh, Mark and Dave. Just a hammer that's got a, a tapered radius on the handle. And I specifically bought this hammer to do that job. I, I didn't really need this hammer whatsoever, but I think I got it for a dollar fifty or two bucks, and it, it had that tapered hardwood radius in it. So I, I knew that I could bash on it and use it for my project without worrying about it. You can use hardwood dowels, you can use glue sticks, you can use anything that's round that will somewhat fit into there. You don't even have to use a tapered one, but I think a tapered one actually fits the crimp location better because it is tapered itself, the, the relief cut. So the next step is before you hammer this down completely flat against the forming block is to take up that extra metal. It takes a little practice. I use my dead blow for this because I get a little bit more leverage. And uh, simply uh, just judging on based on where the size of the taper or the handle fits into that flute, you get a good couple of strong wax and kind of draw it down towards you as you do it and that'll pull that metal right into that flute location, right into that relief cut. You know? And as you're doing that, the metal on the flange between the flutes will actually straighten itself out. So you can see here, you can see here it's almost flat now and that, that's actually just from drawing this down in to that uh, bevel location that's straightened a lot of the waviness out here and pulled it down into there on both sides. This is where the beginning of the very flat edge of it is, and I'll just hammer that flat. And the metal will have a tendency to kind of draw itself flat as you hammer in one direction or another. So to tease the metal into the right location where I would hammer here, I will just kind of draw my hammer kind of down across that edge, kind of pushing that excess metal down as I go, and it'll eventually straighten itself out. So now that I've gotten those drawn relatively flat, I'll go ahead and really pound them tight against this uh, forming block. Get my, my final final shape. Once it hits real solid, it'll have a real solid thump to it. It won't sound hollow anymore. You know you've gotten the metal down as far as you can go. Just kind of work your way down. All right, so that's not too bad. There's a little bit of ripple in this bottom edge of this rib and, and a lot of that has to do with how soft these form block uh, plywood form blocks can be if you you hit really hard with a hammer you can actually put a dent in it and it'll draw the metal into that dent so it happens a little bit it's fairly normal there goes a clamp 
All right, so for my last thing then, I've, I've already pounded the um, metal down into the fluting locations. I'm just going to do it one final time to try to take up any extra metal now that I've got the flange along that at radius down as tight as I can get it with the flat hammer. I'll just try to draw a little bit more metal down in with these flute locations to straighten it out. And as you can see, that's laying quite flat down along the bottom edge of that and, and very little in the way of gaps uh, between flutes. On this long straight edge down here, there's a little bit of waviness, but there's really nothing you can do about that on a hand formed part. A lot of that has to do with when you're initially forming that, your flange towards you, it will stretch the metal a little bit and that's where that comes from. If you absolutely had to, you could put a fourth crimp in here, but I don't think we need to do that. I can, when I pull that off of here, I can just straighten that by hand pretty well and you know, just tease it a little bit and it'll, it'll go where I need it to go. The next thing I'll do is form the front flange and the rear flange. I'll flip it over and do the top flange and show you that as well.